Today's video is brought to you by the fine folks over at ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN, as many of you already know, is a great service that allows you to protect your privacy and security every time that you use the internet. And if you're like me, you probably play a lot of online games with your friends from all over the world, where maybe your connection or their connection may not be the greatest. Using ExpressVPN, you can connect to servers around the globe and connect with friends locally on their end so that you can reduce your latency and overall lag. So for example, my friend Diedrich, who's from the Netherlands, he and I play online games together all the time, and sometimes our connection just isn't having it. I'll use ExpressVPN to connect to a server that works for us both. Final Fantasy XIV Online is a game that I still love to play, especially since Shadowbringers just came out. And with ExpressVPN, it makes it all that much easier. If you want to sign up today, head over to expressvpn.com slash complete or click that link in the box down below. Again, that's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot C-O-M slash C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E. -E. Signing up today using that code will help you to find out how to get your first three months completely free. Also signing up helps the show to keep the lights on and to keep us going. Once again, thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video. Experiencing an RPG for the first time is often an eye-opening experience. The blend of broad, epic storytelling and endless battles are a gateway to stylistic escapism. But jumping into JRPGs can be an overwhelming proposition. Luckily, there's Golden Sun, a perfect introductory Japanese-style RPG. It's simple yet well-paced storytelling, deep and varied combat system, excellent use of magic both in and out of battle, and treasure trove of secrets help it stand out as a fan favorite. Experience an influential classic with me as I complete Golden Sun. Here comes a new challenger! Yeah! Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. I've been feeling kind of stuck lately, and there's no better way to get out of that rut than by going on an epic adventure with enormous scale. And when I can't do that, there's always RPGs. I turned this question over and over in my head while I was playing. What makes Golden Sun so beloved? I think it's a combination of things. This game is pretty easy, but not shallow. The art direction is stunning. It's absolutely knocking between the eyes striking. But most of all, I think the game's success has to do with its timing. See, Golden Sun released in the summer of 2001. Although the GBA had a number of classic RPGs ported to it over its long lifespan, the fact that Golden Sun was a fantastic original IP right after the handheld came out was a huge point in its favor. All these factors combined made this game a hit. Golden Sun's plot starts off with a literal bang, a volcanic eruption in fact. You control silent protagonist Isaac, who is woken up by a terrible storm in his usually quiet hometown of Vale. And that storm is caused by thieves attempting to raid the soul sanctum. Rocks are falling all over the place, townspeople are running around scared, and amidst the chaos, several people, including Isaac's father, are killed or lost. Smash cut to three years later, and Isaac and his childhood friends are doing their best to get by. Vale is home to a number of people known as adepts, or people who are attuned to magic and magic is known as synergy in this game. Local mysterious old Ku Kraden convinces Isaac and a couple of friends to explore Soul Sanctum, to uncover the mystery of alchemy and the four elements that keep the world balanced. If it all sounded like fantasy nonsense to you, don't worry, the plot is probably the least important part of Golden Sun. Mechanics-wise, Golden Sun is your pretty standard role-playing game, in line with older Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest titles. There's an overworld full of random battles to stumble into, as if two rats are going to end your quest to save the world. There are towns, caves, forests, and dungeons scattered all over the map for players to explore. Battles are turn-based, and characters can attack, cast spells, use items, or defend themselves. After successful battles, party members earn experience points to level up and gold to purchase items with. Naturally, only one member of the party wanders around on the map, and other party members only show up in battle or cutscenes. I think at the end of the day, I just described almost every JRPG out there. 
There are some aspects of the game that reflect Golden Sun's long, fragmented development. Originally, developer Camelot was planning on making one enormous game, possibly on the Nintendo 64. And during that planning stage, the development team learned that the GameCube would be replacing the N64 before not too long. So Camelot decided to rework the game for the handheld Game Boy Advance. The development time was long for a handheld game, about 18 months instead of the usual year or less. But they ran into another problem. The scope of the game was too large to fit on just one GBA cartridge. So what was originally going to be one big game became Golden Sun and a sequel, Golden Sun The Lost Age who has the same coin. So rather than making players angry, the cliffhanger ended on the first game making everyone excited for the rest of the series. The two games are meant to be played side by side, even though they were released about a year apart. There's even an option to bring over party members from the first Golden Sun into the Lost Age with a complicated password and link cable system. That being said, I only completed the first Golden Sun. And even though the story is the first half of the much larger tale, I think Golden Sun absolutely stands out on its own as a memorable RPG with outstanding mechanics. I was happy to sink comfortably into the world of Wayard as I explored every inch of the map. In an epic RPG like this, there are things that I'm always on the lookout for. Naturally, I'll have to complete the main story by leveling up my party members to the appropriate levels and fighting the final boss. But there is always more to do in a game like this. Golden Sun has tons of side content and examining each piece of it was a pleasure. There are 28 adorable elemental themed monsters called the Jin to collect throughout my journey, seven for each of the four elements. They're vitally important and kind of game breaking, and not just because each one provides a stat boost when given to a character. The Jin are the key to messing around with powerful summons, as well as the class system, one of Golden Sun's best ideas. Of course, there are a gazillion pieces of armor and weapons to collect, and I'm gonna find all the special ones that I can. This means getting rare drops from specific enemies for some of the best weapons in the game. Now, I usually hate this kind of thing, as the amount of grinding this requires can turn even the most incredible game into a mind-numbing chore. But I am happy to say that due to the amount of grinding I did to learn every spell, this wasn't an issue at all. And I ended up with more rare swords than a rare sword depository. I don't know, I got nothing. So because this is a fantasy RPG, Isaac and the other party members can earn experience points and level up in random battles. Characters learn different and more powerful synergies at higher levels. So I'll be monster mashing and grinding my way up the ladder until I'm doing the screen fillingest magic spells Golden Sun has to offer. Even though the grind is a little out of control and even unnecessary, it was never boring due to the always entertaining battle system. Lastly, Golden Sun has a fantastic secret dungeon called Crossbone Isle that has nine floors of puzzles, battles, and treasure. I had to keep returning to it over the course of the game because it's impossible to complete it until you have every synergy that lets players solve puzzles outside of battle. The secret final boss in the game, Deadbeard, resides on the final floor and it's way the hell harder than any other enemy in the game. It's easy to see why Golden Sun is beloved by so many. It wasn't meant to kick off an entire franchise, but it did, and I'm glad to finally be experiencing this masterpiece of a game. It's gorgeous and entertaining perfectly easing new players into long-established JRPG tropes while also shaking up the formula with some fantastic original ideas of its own. Golden Sun plays on tropes that have been a part of the RPG genre since its earliest inception. It pays homage to classic RPGs while adding enough of its own unique components that it becomes totally unique. After completing it, I am convinced that Golden Sun is the absolute perfect introductory RPG. So for any RPG to distinguish itself and make an impact, it must rise above the cliches inherent to the genre. Yeah, us veteran game players know the world must be saved and that the journey will be a coming of age tale for several precocious youths. There will be spells and swords and tons of backtracking. Newbies might not know about these tropes, but what's great about Golden Sun is that it indulges in these cliches while also putting its own spin on them. The result is strong world building that stands firmly on its own. I love that the game starts off with a tragedy. The stakes are personal for Isaac and his friends, and that helps kick off the rest of the plot. Even though eventually everything comes down to saving the world from its own destruction, I was intrigued that for every party member, there were personal stakes. There are very personal stakes. 
Isaac wants to avenge his father, seemingly crushed by a boulder when villains Satyrus and Mandari try to steal the elemental MacGuffins. I mean, sorry, elemental stars. Garrett wants to save childhood friend Jenna and mentor Kraden, kidnapped by the very same villains. Ivan's trying to rescue his father figure Hammett, and Mia joins the party to atone for her failure to protect the Mercury Lighthouse. By keeping the stakes personal, I felt like I was able to identify a little bit more than if it was simply four plucky adventurers doing the best they can because they're just naturally good people. Golden Sun's core four are pretty thinly characterized, which I found a little disappointing. For example, Garrett is most associated with the element of fire, so naturally, he's hot-headed and impulsive. Mia is the party's healer, so she's always trying to make people feel better. However, these blandly inoffensive characters are perfect for newcomers to the genre, who can project their own personalities onto Isaac and the rest of the party. Now, I'm not going to knock this game for not having amazingly written characters, as that's a stretch for any video game in the best of circumstances. It's perfectly medium, and that's okay. One bit that made me laugh out loud is that early in the game, right after the first main story beat, it's entirely possible to get a bad ending and lose the game right there. There are plenty of yes-no choices in this game, but none of them have any meaningful consequences, except for early on when a wise old sage asks if you'll accept this quest. Isaac himself can deny responsibility, leave the room, and the world will plunge into darkness. Whoops. So the visual style and art direction of Golden Sun itself is strikingly beautiful and easy to love at first sight. I journeyed across two huge continents in this game, and the towns are some of the best video game towns I've ever spent time in. They're huge and lively, and practically every single one of them has the same collection of vendors, weapons and armor shops, a healer who removes curses, and an inn. But all that comes with the territory. How else will new fans learn about RPG towns? But you see, each town is much more than just a pit stop to heal and purchase marginally better equipment. They all have something unique about them that makes them memorable. There's a town of people who were turned into trees by an angry Ent knockoff. Another town is run by the descendant of a noble thief. There's even a town that hosts weird Super Bowl equivalent known as Colosso that the player gets to completely break using their synergy powers. Seriously, I felt like a generation of kids who grew up beating the Colosso tournament were subconsciously taught that cheating is fine as long as the opponent never finds out about it. One way Golden Sun sets itself apart from its predecessors is with a little skill called Mind Read. Every character has synergy abilities that they can use outside of battle, and Ivan's Mind Read is one of the most useful in the game. Every character you meet has secret thoughts and opinions about your party, and the revealed thoughts often flesh out the world in interesting and funny ways. A hardened warrior might actually secretly be a scaredy cat, or a mother might be masking grief. I wanted to mind read everyone I came across, and I'm glad I did. Outrageously intrusive though it might seem. Golden Sun's battles are incredibly fast paced and exciting, not to mention gorgeous looking, and I envy anyone who's experienced this RPG's combat system as their first. One way Golden Sun keeps things fresh is that many weapons have an unleash, kind of like a critical hit, that deals extra damage or has a special effect. This makes battles feel cinematic and spectacular, even when you're just crushing gnomes or bees with superpowered sword strikes. It feels awesome to unleash an epic attack and completely flatten an enemy. RPGs usually have elements of player empowerment to them, and Golden Sun is no different. When I say this game is a good first RPG, that may have some negative connotations behind it. But what I mean is that this game is pretty easy overall. The exposition is pretty handholdy, the characters will explain a lot of the plot points, and then explain it again, and then to really test your patience, they'll repeat themselves. It's also very linear until about 60% through the game. But that's the beauty of it. It's handholdy where it needs to be, yet it gives the player plenty of room to explore and feel like a genius in other places. Golden Sun will feel like a perfectly fitted glove for RPGs. RPG experts, and for newbies, it's a great example of how to showcase why people love RPGs in the first place. The game does something that I'm always striving for. It delights and inspires, and it just might start players down a path to something great. Golden Sun brings several fresh ideas to the table in the form of synergy and equipable elemental gin. 
Pretty much every RPG has magic to use in battle, but Golden Sun gives players so many options with how to use their synergy both in battle and outside of it that I was constantly surprised and impressed with the depth that was made available. Golden Sun synergy and class system is some of the best use of magic in any RPG hands down. It's a great introduction to an in-depth system for new fans and has enough depth for RPG veterans. In many RPGs, the characters rarely use magic for anything besides fighting. In a battle, a character might use a healing spell only to get killed in a later cutscene. In Golden Sun, it feels like the characters practice what they preach because they're able to take the magic outside of a fight to solve problems. It made me feel smart to use my tools to solve puzzles, especially later on in the game. And of course, there's the Jinn. These little critters represent earth, wind, fire, and water. And if you find them all, Captain Planet shows up and defeats Satoris and Mandari. All right, that last one might not be accurate, but I'm just making sure you're paying attention. The Jinn, found in the overworld and various dungeons or towns, join your characters one at a time throughout your adventure and completely change the game. Jinn can be set or put on standby on individual characters. Setting Jinn gives your characters ridiculous stat boosts and also gives them access to new and different synergies. Each main character has a natural affinity for an element, and since the Jinn are also elemental, they can provide spells associated with these very same elements. Like Garrett, for instance, is the fire guy, but if you give him a couple of Earth Jinn, get him to a high enough level, and watch him learn a new skill or 10. Mixing and matching Jinn is incredibly satisfying. While it seems to make the most sense to keep the Jinn associated with their element on their respective characters, it's just plain fun to switch things up every now and then. Giving my party an entire different skill set is not something that usually happens in a game like this. Golden Sun really encourages playing around with these options with the battle mode, which is accessible from the main menu. In this mode, players can fight an endless horde of monsters or even another player if you've got a link cable lying around though no experience or gold is earned. It's purely for fun, practice, and to play around with different classes and synergy. I love that some synergy is locked behind different combinations of Jin, including some field synergy. Growth, a spell that grows vines, is inaccessible unless a character changes classes, meaning that if you really want to solve every puzzle, you have to step out of your comfort zone and move some Jin around. Well, either that or switch Jin, cast a spell, and then switch them back, whatever works for you. The Jin and Synergy work hand in hand to provide players with access to new spells and tactics, but they have another function in battle. After a Jin is unleashed in battle, it goes to standby mode, and when enough Jin of the same element are on standby, characters can perform powerful summons, like this giant snow cone machine or the Norse god Thor, which raises so many questions about religion in this world. The downside is that while Jin are on standby, they don't don't provide any stat boosts to their assigned characters. It's risky to put too many Jin on standby, but the damage that summons can deal is almost always worth it. Jumping into any game with new mechanics can be confusing and tricky, especially in RPGs. I for one love the Materia system in Final Fantasy VII, or the Sphere Grid in Final Fantasy X, but Golden Sun's Jin and the way they affect synergy are elegant. Players who want a challenge can mix and match the Jin among characters for different classes, and people who want to have an easier time can constantly leave their Jin on standby and pull off big damage summons as often as possible. See, there's something for everyone. Throughout Golden Sun, the presence of Jin and the different synergy made battles a blast. They were never dull, and there was always a different tactic to use. My only complaint would be that the Jin and their summons made the game a little too easy, but it was never boring. My opinion was pretty high on this game all the way through. It's entertaining, visually and orally it's incredible, and the combat felt fresh throughout. But while almost all the exploration feels satisfying and rewarding, there's just a little too much grind to get to 100% completion. Now, Jin hunting was fun and pretty simple. I was worried that I'd have to backtrack a ton or that I'd miss a Jin behind some obscure puzzle. But the game wants players to find the Jin and experiment with them. It's not nearly as complex as trying to build social links in a Persona game or trying to find a specific Pokemon. I didn't even have to work to recruit them to my team like in Fire Emblem. Other than a few Jin that must be felled in battle, most of them just joined my crew voluntarily. The main quest is pretty easy, especially if you make sure to grab all the Jin by the final dungeon in the game. When I reached Venus Lighthouse, my party was around level 30, and that was plenty high enough to beat the final boss and see the cliffhanger ending. The real test for synergy and puzzles is Crossbone Isle, a dungeon that players can find about halfway through the game. In my playthrough, I found it somewhat early while 
while crossing a massive lake on a ship. It's possible to make the ship veer off course, stranding players on this secluded island. Crossbone Isle is just floor after floor of brain teasers and tough battles, but it wasn't long before I encountered some puzzles that were impossible to solve because I needed more skills. I returned to Crossbone Isle twice more and was finally able to conquer it on my third visit after I found the final field synergy, Carry. The puzzles pushed me to my limit and tested how I could apply several different skills I had learned over the course of the game. In the fights on every floor, concluding on the epic battle against Deadbeard, who's an awesome undead pirate, pushed me to the brink, but the game rewarded me appropriately with some powerful cursed weapons and armor and more gold than I knew what to do with. But I still hadn't unlocked all the synergy. The most powerful synergy attacks aren't learned until after level 50. So I went back to my save file in the room before the final boss and started grinding away. It wasn't too strenuous, just time consuming. And these final synergy spells like Spark Plasma and Cataclysm are insanely powerful and look incredible, but they are absolutely completely un necessary, in my opinion. I felt similarly about going after the rare drop items. It wasn't actually all that difficult to grind for them, all things considered. There's a method called the Gin Kill method that drastically increases the drop rates of rare weapons, like the Giant Axe, or the Kikui Chimonchi. If you defeat an enemy with a Gin that its elemental weakness is, the drop rate for that item shoots up, and since I spent hours grinding, I would wind up with multiples of everything. Now this is where Golden Sun lost me a little bit. I understand that these characters are meant to carry over into the Lost Age, but unless you really, really want to use Grand Gaia on the final boss in the game, there are no other benefits to leveling up this highly. Crossbone Isle and the Deadbeard battle are tough, but even at that, they are beatable at around level 25. There's no bonus for mastering every synergy in the game, and I really wish there was. So by the end of the game, I had two save files. One where I was just about at where the game wanted me to be stat-wise. In the other, I was comically overleveled with the most powerful spells and more rare equipment that I knew what to do with. I loved that the game let me approach the end game how I wanted to. When I completed Golden Sun, there were 28 Jin encountered, all of them adorable and powerful in equal measure. Over 1 million experience points earned per character, which gave my party members access to the most powerful synergies in the game. Over 50 hours played, at least 20 of which were spent grinding in tiny rooms before the final boss. Seven Kikuichi Monji found as a result of all that grinding, and one phenomenal start to a series that seriously could use a reboot or a sequel. I know it's been said before, but now I am on the hype train, baby. Golden Sun is a wonderful RPG, and I can see why it has such an incredibly passionate fan base. People have been asking me to complete this game for ages, and it was a pleasure to finally do so. I loved the class system, the cool synergy outside of battles, and literally everything about the art direction is tight. Fully completing it though, I didn't love having to grind for hours upon hours in a tiny room to get those final few spells. I wish there was more of an endgame challenge for players who took the time to level up that high, because I did find this game to be quite a breeze otherwise. It's still a great game, and I'm happy to have finally jumped on this bandwagon. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of... Finish It. Finish It! That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, do me a favor, hit that like button and leave a comment down below of what games that you want to see done on the show. And hey, a big thank you to our uh, sponsor today, ExpressVPN, expressvpn.com slash complete. That helps us, helps the show, all that fun stuff. And hey, if you like the show and you're new here, hit that subscribe button and click the bell to stay up to date on all of our notifications. We do new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I've been Gerard the Completionist, and I'll see you next week for the brand new episode. Bye-bye.